Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8-8 garden. And today we are having fairly nice weather. The humidity is down right now. And so I'm super excited to get a little bit of time outside before it really kicks in this afternoon. We're gonna be doing four chores in the garden and then we might be making a run through to Callaway's to use my 30% off coupon. So stay tuned. <music> Okay, we're over on the side garden today and I actually have a ton of volunteer meteor shower verbena that's coming up. It's beautiful. I'm going to let it go. do have a few weeds, but I have a bunch of this bunny tail grass that is just looks terrible. Believe it or not, it ended up dying in the drought, which is just shocking. So um, anyway, I'm going to pull this up, clear out this space a little bit and allow myself the opportunity to kind of like look at the space with this stuff removed and make come up with a future plan of what I want to do with this space. Maybe adding a little bit of fall color. I'm not quite sure yet, but let's get it cleaned up to start off with. Today I'm using my Hori Hori knife um, to pull them up, although it's pretty easy to pull them up. And I'm using my um, garbage bag or my debris bag from Aldi's. Okay, a simple, easy cleanup. I've got all the bunny tail in here. It's looking kind of scraggly and nasty. It was really good, y'all, until about the very last week of July. And then it just went kaput. And I do have a couple of lilies back there that are gonna be lily trees. This was their first year, so they were only a couple of feet tall. They should be four to five feet tall next year. I also have this Pugster butterfly bush from Proven Winners that had gotten really bad mealybugs. So I cut it down to the ground and it is all coming back beautifully. And then I have a lot of volunteer meteor showers verbena, which reseeded itself in the space. And I love how whimsical and fun it is. I also, this coneflower right here is a green twister coneflower and I actually see a little bloom down in there. This guy hasn't uh, bloomed this year, but it is um, grown from seed. So it's grown a lot in its first year. I also have this white pearl yarrow, which I don't love. So I'm deciding if I want to pull it up. I grew it from seed this year. And then back here, I have a couple of super duper um, paradisio cone flowers that I grew from seed, which are stunning. And I absolutely love them this year, and I absolutely want to grow some more from seed, but they're looking really good too. Oh, I actually see a flower over here from one of them. Here's one right there. Sweet. That's looking really good. So just pulling up the bunny tail made a big difference. Feels really good. Cleaned it up. And now I can start envisioning what I actually want to do here in the space. I am thinking about on this giant wall right here, I would like to create an espalier. Um, up on this wall. I think it would be really, really nice. It's kind of just like a blank space, but I'd like to do some kind of maybe jasmine vine. I'm not sure. It needs to be able to take a lot of heat because it is west facing and it will be on a brick wall during all that heat. <laughs> so I'll have to do a little bit more research. Maybe that'll be a project for next spring. Just a quick warning, the sunlight is kind of flashing around in this next portion of the video. So anyone who might be sensitive to that needs to be aware. Thanks y'all. Okay, so over here, we are on the side of the house, the side garden, and this is in the back corner against the fence to my backyard. And I have an oak leaf hydrangea that is just struggling, y'all. It, it has struggled in every spot I've had it. I've had it in a couple of different spots. I've had it in a container, just having a hard time. So it's time to let it go. <laughs> um, it, it is getting some new growth, but truthfully, the plant has been through so much distress. Its bark is peeling, it's had disease. It's really had a lot. So I'm just going to let the plant go 
it's obviously telling me that it's not happy and it's sick. So I'm going to be pulling out this Oak Leaf Hydrangea and I'm going to be replacing it with a sweet almond verbena. Now, if you guys recall, I planted a sweet almond verbena also on the side garden. So I would like to repeat another of this element. It has some beautiful showy white blooms that are big time um, pollinator attractors. Now, this guy has actually been languishing in his um, nursery can for two months on my back porch. So it is way past time to get it in, but it should fill in this space really beautifully. It can be cut almost to the ground every season. And so I'm kind of excited to get it in here, get this space looking good and not be looking at this sad hydrangea anymore. So let's get the hydrangea out and then let's talk about how we're gonna go ahead and plant the sweet almond verbena. Okay, I've dug my hole and it was pretty easy to dig because I had already messed around with all this soil when I was originally planting the oak leaf hydrangea. I'm also going to backfill this with some plant tone fertilizer. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and fit my plant into here. knock a little bit of the soil in yeah that looks good now before I backfill with the dirt what I'm going to do is use my hose and add a lot of water around the base y'all and when you're planting larger things like this shrubs trees you really want to take time to water things in really really well at the base of the plant before filling it back in and this gives the roots a lot of opportunity to you know get soaked in with the water because if you backfill with the soil and then just water after that there's a really good chance that you're going to have some dry spots in there some of the area is not going to get to the water so this is a really good way just go ahead get this taken up and especially since this guy has been hanging out in its nursery pot for so long this is the way to go so I'm going to do that and I'm going to allow just a few minutes for the soil, uh, the water to uh, soak in and then I will come back and I will backfill with um, the soil that I removed and we should be good to go on this guy. Okay, it looks like all the water is soaked in so I'm just going to come back in here and I am going to backfill with the soil that I had pulled out. My soil, native soil, is a lot of clay. So I am constantly working on it and amending it, things along those lines. So I think I actually want to pull my drip up and move it back one like this. And once I'm done with that, I am going to use my foot to gently tap down the soil around the base of the plant. Make sure I've got good contact all the way around. Okay, so we've got it planted. But y'all, you're not done. You don't just stick it in the ground and then never look at it again. You do really need to keep an eye on this for like the next month or so, making sure it's watered. If it looks like it's in distress, giving it extra water. 
You also want to watch as the soil continues to settle in this space. So you might have to come back and add some more compost or soil on top to make sure you don't have any of the root ball exposed. We should be good here, but I will really not, definitely be keeping an eye on it. It does have drip lines over here, so it will get water. Right now I'm watering every three days. So it should be fine, but I'm excited. It will fill in this whole space where my body is. It smells amazing. I think the white flowers and this lighter greenery will contrast really well with the smoke bush right beside it. Okay, you may remember the urns that I installed on this side of the house. I did install drip lines into them as well. I've got those right here and the drip lines do come up through the back of the pot, but I've never planted anything in them. And I truthfully, I haven't decided on anything permanent at this point in time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop some beautiful purple fountain grass into these. Won't that look gorgeous? Yeah, super excited. I think they'll look really great for the fall. So I'm gonna start by removing a bunch of the soil that's in here right now and making room because this is a three gallon pot right there, right? So it's gonna take up almost all this space. So I do have one empty container right here. Use my hoary hoary knife to loosen it up. But let's pull out some of this soil and make room for this plant. Okay, I'm gonna start by putting in plant tone at the base. Next, I'm gonna grab my plant right here. And now this is definitely root bound and that's very typical of ornamental grasses. I'm just gonna use the serrated edge of my hoary hoary knife right here just to gently roughen up the sides, the root, just like that y'all. And that's just gonna stimulate some growth for them. Just like that. All right, let's put this in. That looks so good. Okay, so let's start backfilling with some of the soil. And I'm using my fingers to kind of tuck the soil back down around the plant because I mean, like I said, this is a three gallon plant. So I really had to remove a lot of soil. I think this is a really fun, easy solution for the fall until I really start determining what I want with these. Truthfully, I was just talking with a friend the other day. I'm not even sure these are the right scale for what I'm looking for. So maybe I'll be looking for some different urns, more substantial, larger. I don't know, we'll see. You can also use your hoary hoary knife. To force some of the soil down in there. All right, so I'm gonna take my existing drip line. It's right there. I'm just gonna wrap it around the base of the plant and use, I dropped my little staples down here, y'all. What did I, why did I do that? <laughs> there it is. And use one of the landscaping staples to pin it in place. All right, and then let's fluff this guy out a little bit. He looks great. Okay, I'm gonna water this in and go to the next one. Okay, before I plant this purple fountain grass, let's talk about what's going on with it. It's flopping pretty bad, right? All right, so a couple of things you can do. You can put a stake in the center and secure it to the stake. I like to come through with a little bit of twine. This is just regular gardening twine, got from the dollar tree, nothing expensive. And I like to take a strand and I like to come in here at the base and I like to tie it up. I don't tie it too tight, but I definitely tie it firmly. And I have found that typically 
one tie is not enough. So I'll do one and then cut myself a second piece. Come up maybe three to four inches higher and tie another one. And this just gives the plant a little bit more structure and um, assistance in staying upright. All right, so that's a good start right there. So we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna pull out my existing plant. Okay, I really, really like them in this base. I do think this shows me that I need larger urns. So there's one and the other one is over here. And I'll step back in a minute to show you guys. Look at the presence and depth it adds to the space. I really like it. Let me step back down, give you guys a little bit more. See, I feel like the urn needs to be about six to 12 inches taller and a little bit larger, more substantial. I didn't want to invest in concrete urns, but maybe I need to. It'd be hard to find a fiberglass one that large. Yeah, I really like it. It adds depth, you know, how the urn is back further and then like that guar kind of spills over in front of it. And then the balloon flower in front of that. It looks really nice. I'm digging it. Okay, you might hear flute on the other side of this window, my daughter's practicing her flute. Um, okay, so I did the three projects. I was gonna do a fourth project, but it is now the humidity is really starting to kick in. Early in the morning, it's not too bad, but it's starting to kick in now. So I think I'm gonna clean up real quick, and I think let's go over to Callaway's and use my 30% off coupon. Let's see what I can find. Okay, so I got all cleaned up, and now I'm at Callaway's, and I have a 30% off coupon today for Labor Day. Um, they will pop those up every once in a while. So if you haven't joined, you know, their Facebook, Instagram, anything like that, uh, Callaway's, or if you don't get their emails, make sure you sign up for that. So you know when they're going to do sales like this. And so I did drive over here. I am have a chaperone to make sure I don't spend too much over here. So anyway, we'll see what happens. It was super exciting to see that they had a bunch of their pumpkins out, which is really fun. I always find that Callaway's has a wide variety of really unique pumpkins. The prices aren't too rough. I typically like to get my standard yellow jack-o'-lantern pumpkins at some place like Walmart or Aldi's, but I do like to come to places like Callaway's to pick up some cute, you know, fairy tale pumpkins or interesting gourds or something along those lines. But super exciting to see all of this out and ready to go for the fall. Okay, so I'm completely obsessed with the colors of this particular fall planter because they really played up raspberries and burgundies and deep purples and reds and uh, I just loved it. And it was definitely something unusual for a fall planter. Very cool. Love the orange container and love these unusual pumpkin colors kind of propped up beside it. I'm glad I've recorded this because I would love to make this in the future. There are also these beautiful pots over here, absolutely stunning shades of blue, kind of had like a water aspect and kind of look to them, absolutely beautiful. They were $40 for the large ones, which I thought was insane for the price, but definitely very pretty. This wrought iron Ferris wheel was pretty cool too. You basically put, you know, little plants in the carriers, which I thought was super cute. Really liked it, um, thought it would be fun, but then also remembering, I would have to water those little planters all the time because they're so tiny, but still super cute. Um, it was $149.99, um, a little bit pricey as well, but when you have a 30% off coupon, way more interesting. I did find this very cool plant by Proven Winners that I had never seen in person before. It's called Flambe Yellow, and I thought it was super unique looking. I 
In hindsight, I wish I picked it up to utilize in a container, but I got distracted by a bunch of other stuff and never made my way back over to this plant. They did have um, several mums available, not tons, but you know, a good amount in their larger containers. Remember when you're looking at mums at this point in time, you want to go ahead and buy them with the buds closed. If you're in my particular zone, don't buy them with them all bloomed out because they won't last very long. You can see that it was $40 for these large scale containers. They looked really, really good, nice, full and healthy. And they did have some smaller versions over here, which were $16.99 each. But yeah, I'm very excited for mums, but I'm still a couple weeks out from picking those up. Now, what I really wanted to do with my 30% off coupon is come back out here and check out some of the topiaries back here. I've been eyeing them for a few weeks and it is something that I would really like to add to my garden, particularly this guy. The name of this guy is Carolina Sapphire Cypress, and I love kind of the icy blue tone that it has. I think it's really pretty. I was more intrigued by the th set of three balls in the topiary as opposed to something like um, just the two. I don't know, the three was more pleasing to my eye. You can see Jeff here pulling out um, the topiaries to kind of show you the sizing on him. And so here's one with the two um, balls and you can kind of see he's going and checking them all out. I guess if I'm gonna invest in something as, ex as expensive as this, he's gonna make sure it's a really good one. Okay, and here is the three stacked topiary, just to kind of give you a look. We ended up going with the one that he is standing directly beside. It had a nice straight trunk. We really liked the size, thought it looked really good. We looked at a couple of other ones, including this spiral right here, which we both thought was pretty interesting, but not really the feel, a little too formal for our garden. Um, it was priced the same as um, the other topiary. Both of these were $150. Um, but yeah, we ended up going with the one on Jeff's right check out this autumn clematis sweet autumn clematis it's growing up the tree in the back of the nursery absolutely stunning i really want some but that invasiveness is a little bit scary <laughs> to me right here is um a um ginkgo a gink ginkgo bilboa bilboa y'all know i'm just gonna butcher these names um tree which i thought was very pretty unique never seen anything like it um, in our area, but look at the shapes of the leaves. Very cool. It was cool to see that in person. Well, anyway, we got the topiary all packed up and headed out to the front with it, and I'm excited for it to go home with us. Okay, after being heavily monitored, I came home with the three-tiered topiary that is a Carolina Cypress, so very excited. It's regularly $150, 30% off, so I got $45 off, so it's just over $100. So excited. It's going to be going in the side garden, and so I can't wait to show you all in a future video where it's going to be planted. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.